Welcome to Homebrewing, hobby, obsession, way of life. This video will show you how to brew your own beer at home using one of Northern Brewer's brewing starter kits. We'll specifically be using Northern Brewer's Big Mouth Bubbler Starter Kit, shown here. Your equipment may be slightly different than what is seen in this video. Don't worry, the concepts and directions shown here will translate over to the starter kit you've chosen. Brewing beer might seem like a mysterious process, but it's really not. Brewing is boiling liquid, moving liquid from vessel to vessel, keeping equipment clean and sanitized, and waiting for yeast to work its magic. If you can make mac and cheese from a box without help, you can make beer, and we're going to show you how. In this video, you will see the three stages of making beer with your Northern Brewer Big Mouth Bubbler Starter Kit. First, the actual brewing where malt extract and hops are boiled in water to make wort, the brewer's term for unfermented beer. Next, fermenting, which is when the wort that we brewed is turned into beer by the yeast. Finally, bottling, where the flat beer is bottled with a little dose of sugar for priming, the brewer's term for carbonating in bottles. And that's all there is to it. Boiling liquid, moving liquid, keeping things clean and sanitized, and waiting for the yeast to do the rest. Before we get started, let's go over the four things you will need. One, a starter kit. Two, a Northern Brewer recipe kit, which will include the ingredients malt extract, hops, possibly some grains, and any other ingredients specific to the recipe. You'll also find a packet of either liquid or dry yeast, which you'll have selected at checkout. 3. A boil kettle that can hold at least 4 gallons of liquid. We're going to use our 5 gallon stainless steel kettle for this video. 4. Bottles for your finished beer. You'll need approximately 2 cases of clean, pry off, 12 ounce beer bottles. Brown glass is the best. Let's get on to our brew day. Carefully unpack all of the equipment from your new starter kit box. Check to make sure you have everything listed in your instructional packet. Next, open your recipe kit. Unpack the contents and make sure you have all the ingredients for your recipe listed on the instruction sheet. Read through your instruction sheet completely before starting your brew day. Each sheet will be different depending on your recipe. Make sure you understand the steps so that we don't make a mistake or take the steps out of order. If you have a liquid yeast, specifically a smack pack, you need to prep the yeast for later. Read the directions on the back of the packaging. Isolate the inner nutrient bag and carefully smack the pack to break open the inner nutrient bag. Feel the pack and make sure the nutrient bag has been completely broken. Shake the smack pack to mix up the nutrient and set the yeast aside for later. With the yeast ready, it's time to collect two and a half gallons of water in the boil kettle and start heating it on the stove. Any good quality drinking water, tap water or otherwise, is fine. If the water tastes good, it will make great beer. The boil kettle is ready and we are going to brew the caribou slobber brown ale. On brewing day, we will boil the malt extract and hops in water to make the wort and then we'll cool the wort. If your recipe kit includes specialty grains, it also includes a muslin bag for steeping. Put the muslin bag over the open sack of grain, tip the sack and slowly pour the grain into the muslin bag. Tie a knot near the top of the muslin bag so the grain doesn't spill while steeping. As the water heats, steep the specialty grains. Specialty grains give an extra color and flavor to the finished beer. Steep the grain for 20 minutes or until the water reaches approximately 170 degrees Fahrenheit, whichever comes first. Not every Northern Brewer recipe kit comes with specialty grain. If your recipe kit doesn't call for specialty grain, you can skip ahead to adding malt extract. Speaking of adding liquid malt extract, here's a tip. A few minutes before you need it, put the open jug of syrup in a sink or tub of hot water. This will make it easier to pour when it's time to add it to the kettle. When you've reached 170 degrees or 20 minutes with your grains, lift them out and let them drain. Don't squeeze the bag. 
Bring the kettle to a boil, turn the heat off, and then add the malt extract. Your recipe kit may include liquid malt extract syrup, dry malt extract, or both. The caribou slobber has both. It's important to turn the heat off before you add the extract. Liquid malt extract, especially, will sink to the bottom of the kettle. If the heat is on, it will scorch. With the heat off, pour the liquid malt extract slowly. Pour the dry malt extract quickly. Stir until the malt extract is fully dissolved, then turn the heat back on and bring it to a boil. When it starts to boil, set a timer for 60 minutes. This boiling liquid is now called wort, or unfermented beer. The wort will be boiled for 60 minutes, during which we add the hops at the time specified on your recipe sheet. Your recipe kit's instructions show the time for each hop addition and any additional ingredients if necessary. For this particular recipe, the caribou slobber, we have three separate additions. One at 60 minutes, another at 45 minutes, and a third at 15 minutes. This is the amount of time each hop addition needs to be boiled. The first, or 60 minute edition, goes in right away and is boiled for the entire 60 minutes. The second edition is added 15 minutes later or with 45 minutes remaining in the boil. The last edition is added 45 minutes into the boil or with 15 minutes remaining. Your recipe kit may call for additional ingredients like spices, sugars, fruit, or additional malt extract. Treat these just like hops and add them to the kettle at their specific times remaining in the boil. Caution. When you boil wort, it creates froth. When you add boil additions like hops, spices, or sugars, it creates a lot of froth. Because wort is very sugary, boil overs are sticky. If the froth begins to build up, stir the kettle vigorously. If this doesn't work, turn the heat off or down and remove the kettle from the heat source. Here's an example of what a boil over looks like. Try not to let this happen on your stove. However, if it does, stop your process, clean up the mess first, then go back to brewing. It's easier to clean up that sticky mess now than it is after letting it scorch for 60 minutes. Once the 60 minute boil is finished and all kettle additions have been made, the wort needs to be cooled to 80 degrees Fahrenheit or below before we can add our yeast and proceed to stage two, fermentation. We're going to use a simple cold water bath to cool the wort. Replace the cold water as necessary or add ice to the water bath to speed up the process. Keep the wort mostly covered to protect it from airborne microbes that could spoil the wort in the future. When the side of the kettle is about room temperature, lukewarm, not hot to the touch, it's time to get ready for fermentation. While the wort is cooling, it's time to do the most important task of the entire brewing process, sanitizing. It's impossible to make good beer with dirty equipment, so everything that comes in contact with the wort or beer from now on must be sanitized. First, assemble the bottling bucket and auto siphon. The gasket and spigot go on the outside of the bucket. The nut goes on the inside. Hand tighten. Don't over tighten it or you'll deform the gasket and cause a leak. Leak test the bucket with plain water before proceeding. Use the sanitizer included in your starter kit to sanitize the equipment. Directions for the appropriate dilution of your sanitizer will be listed on the packaging. Use the gradient lines on your bucket to measure the appropriate amount of water. Make sure the sanitizing solution is well mixed. This solution will sanitize the bucket. Also, put any smaller equipment needed for the next step in the bucket. This could include a funnel, an airlock, a bung, or the lid for your fermenter. You can also add your yeast packet. Most sanitizers require only two minutes of contact time to be effective. Check your sanitizer packaging for specific requirements. It is very important to not rinse a sanitizer from your equipment. 
Some sanitizers create foam. Foam is okay. It won't hurt your beer, nor will it impart any flavor or aroma. Don't fear the foam. While you have the pre-measured sanitizing solution in the graduated bucket, put five gallons into your six or six and a half gallon primary fermenter. Big mouth plastic bubblers have gallon graduations molded into the plastic. If you're using glass, you'll need to mark the carboy at the five gallon mark. Tape or permanent marker works well for this. Allow the sanitizer to touch all inside surfaces of your fermenter. When the wort in the kettle is cooled and the fermentation equipment is sanitized, it's time to fill the fermenter. Pour the cooled wort into your fermenter, leaving behind any thick sludge that is accumulated in the bottom of the kettle. You'll have a volume of about two to three gallons in your fermenter. You now need to top up the fermenter two five gallons with cool water. The side of the fermenter should not be warm to the touch. Rock the fermenter back and forth for a few minutes to make sure all contents are mixed. This process also adds oxygen, an important component of a healthy fermentation. Now it's time to add the yeast. If you have dry yeast, you can sprinkle it onto the surface of the wort. If you're using a liquid yeast and prepped it at the beginning of your brew day, you will notice that the bag has started to inflate. This is a sign of active, healthy yeast. Open up the package and pour it in. Fill the airlock with sanitizer and insert it into either the lid or the bung at the top of your fermenter. Now, move your fermenter to a dark, out-of-the-way space. Now it's time for the yeast to go to work. Within a day or two of brewing day, fermentation begins. While the yeast convert malt sugars to alcohol and carbon dioxide, you will see bubbles coming out of the airlock and foam on the surface of the beer. This foam is called croisin. Croisin is good. It's a sign of a healthy fermentation. If the croisin tries to escape through the neck of the carboy, this is called blow-off. Blow-offs can clog up your airlock and eventually push your bung and airlock out and off of your fermenter altogether. If you see this starting to happen, attach a sanitized blow-off hose to the mouth of the carboy and run the other end into a bucket of sanitizer. This will act as a giant airlock and will allow excess foam and CO2 to escape without making your beer susceptible to outside air. Roughly one to two weeks from brewing day, the fermented beer is transferred to a five gallon carboy for secondary fermentation. If you do not have a five gallon secondary fermenter, no problem. Let your beer sit in your primary fermenter for one to two more weeks and then move to the bottling process. If you have a five gallon secondary fermenter, you'll want to transfer your beer from the primary fermenter into the secondary fermenter. This stage allows your beer to clarify, age, and also gives you an additional vessel so that you can have multiple batches going at all times. Sanitize the five gallon fermenter and siphon, then rack, the brewer's term for transferring, the beer from primary to secondary, minimizing the amount of splashing. Splashing causes an uptake of oxygen that can potentially create unwanted flavors in your beer. Leave behind as much sludge as you can in the primary fermenter. Start your siphon higher in the carboy and lower it towards the bottom as the transfer continues. Tilt the carboy near the end of the transfer to make sure you get every last drop of beer without picking up sludge. The caribou slobber calls for a one to two week primary fermentation followed by two to four weeks in secondary fermentation before you bottle. Now that fermentation is finished and the beer has had a chance to age and clarify, it's time to bottle. Assemble the bottling bucket and auto siphon, prepare a sanitizing solution and sanitize the bucket, siphon, bottle filler, three foot hose and approximately 60 bottle caps. You'll also have to sanitize two cases of 12 ounce Pry off beer bottles. Immerse the bottles in your sanitizer for the recommended contact time. Pour the sanitizer back into the bucket and do not rinse. Now you need to prepare a priming solution. Mix 5 ounces of priming sugar in 16 ounces of water. The measured dose of sugar will create a small, controlled fermentation in the bottles. The CO2 given off by this fermentation 
will carbonate the beer. Bring the priming solution to a boil, let it cool for a few minutes, then pour it into your sanitized bottling bucket. Make sure the spigot is closed. Siphon the beer from the fermenter into the bottling bucket. When the bucket is full, stir the primed beer gently to make sure your priming solution is dissolved evenly. Attach one end of the three foot bottling hose to the clear end of the bottle filler. Attach the other end of the hose to the spigot on the bottling bucket. Open the spigot. Fill the bottles by depressing the bottle filler against the bottom of the bottles. The valve will open and the beer will flow. Lift up on the filler to close the valve when the bottles are full. Leave about one inch of headspace in each bottle. Put a sanitized bottle cap on a filled bottle. Center the bell of the bottle capper on the cap. Push down on the levers and release. The cap should be crimped tightly. After the bottles are filled and capped, the beer needs to condition. Move the bottles to a dark space around 68 degrees Fahrenheit. After one to two weeks, the bottles should be carbonated and can be stored cool or cold. Now, the moment you've been waiting for, like many craft beers, your homebrew is bottle conditioned. There will be a thin layer of yeast at the bottom of each bottle. This is unfiltered, natural, living beer. Pour your beer slowly and carefully into a clean glass, leaving behind the layer of yeast. Thanks for joining us for Home Brewing 101. From Northern Brewer to your house, happy brewing. Cheers. <laughs>